out there? Uh, it's a slow news day. Let's see. Uh, well, 35 years ago today, they finished carving the heads on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> what do you mean, carving? <laughs> you try to tell me they carve their heads up there? <laughs> so how else are they going to get there? <laughs> Mother Nature did it, Murray. <laughs> She made Mount Rushmore the Grand Canyon and me. The steep, the deep, and the creep. Hi. Oh, hi, Mayor. Oh, uh, how did the hearing go? Not terrific, Murray. The grand jury gave me one last chance to reveal my news source. I refused, and I'm going to have to stand trial for contempt. I thought that was settled when you spend the night in jail. Well, it's a new grand jury, and apparently they can cite me for contempt all over again. Oh, well, don't worry about it, Mary. Justice is on your side. And when you're sitting in that witness box, Stand on your constitutional rights. Invoke the First Amendment, and occasionally, flash a little pie. <laughs> what happened? I'm going to have to stand trial. We're going to have to get you a good trial attorney. Hey, my attorney's a good man. Trouble is, he's in a hospital right now. Yeah, he got run over when an ambulance suddenly went into reverse. <laughs> Listen, Mary. Mary. There's a guy I have in mind, Barry Monroe, a poker buddy of mine. I'm sure I can get him to take your case. And you'll be in terrific hands. I've seen him operate. He can prove that anybody in the world is innocent. Hi, everyone. Well, almost anybody. <laughs> You mean the curlers? Oh, Mary doesn't care about that, do you, Mary? <laughs> you wanted me to introduce you to Barry. Here he is, Mary Richards, Barry Monroe. How do you, uh, wet nails do? <laughs> well, great. Hurry up. Let's go. Go? We've got the biggest poker game in years. Come on, Barry. I don't want to miss it. Uh, forgive me, Mary. I don't want to miss this either. Come to the office tomorrow. We'll discuss your case. Oh, too. good, because we really have to get this settled. I mean, I can't keep worrying about whether or not I'm going to go to jail. Everything's going to be okay. I don't know. It's hard to believe that everything's look, going look, to be look okay. Look at me. You know? Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> My mother had little violet flecks in her eyes, just like you. I don't have violet flecks. Oh yes, in yes, she do. doesn't she, Lou? Violet flecks, violet flecks. Come on, let's violet play pool. So we'll miss one hand. Now, this is important. Yeah. You mean we're not going to be there when they break the seal on the deck? I'm sure they'll tell us all about it. <laughs> you know what I can't figure out? is why they're bringing me up on contempt charges again. I mean, last year, the grand jury said that as a newsman, I'm protected by the First Amendment. Mm. Unless they're planning to claim that as a television producer, you're not a legitimate newsman. Oh. There's a similar case going on like that in Oregon at this moment. Mary, not a newsman? That's ridiculous. Excuse me, Mary. I just realized how insensitive I was. Your case is a lot more important than my game. So we're just going to sit here and talk about your case and forget the game. Oh, Mr. Grant, I don't want you to do that. You heard her. Let's go. Well, <laughs> a couple of minutes. No, no, Mary. You don't have anything to worry about. A television reporter has the same First Amendment rights as a newspaper reporter. Oh, good, good, good. Can you tell me how much this will cost? Well, I'm going to set an unusual fee. Four dinner dates and a lunch. <laughs> no, really. What... I'm being half serious. <laughs> no, I would really feel much more comfortable if you would just tell me your... Ordinary fee. $75 an hour. I know a wonderful little restaurant. <laughs> Mary, I want... Why, you're not Mary. <laughs> well, what gave you your first clue? Oh, Mary's not a hunk. <laughs> Can I help you with something? Uh, no, I just couldn't wait any longer for Mary. I want to leave her a note. I've been looking through my briefs, and it's important that we talk as soon as possible. <laughs> I certainly hope you're a lawyer. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm Barry Monroe. I'm defending Mary. I'm Sue Ann Nivens, Mary's dearest friend. <laughs> so, you're the handsome attorney Mary's been seeing so much of these past weeks. Well, we've been working pretty hard on a case, Miss... Nevins, I've been wanting to talk to you. We need an extra character witness at the trial. 
Wonderful. Oh, I'd be more than happy to tell the court what a really fine person Mary is. <laughs> Warm, sincere, industrious, punctual. Oh, sometimes I wish I could be more like her. But no, I'm stuck with being wildly unpredictable. <laughs> Passionate. And just about the best time a fella can have in a Well, I'll call you if I need you. And vice versa. <laughs> Hi, Ted. <laughs> Say, Barry, we must have some lunch sometime. Why? <laughs> because there's one thing I enjoy. It's a good conversation about law. You know, I once thought of going to law school. What prevented you? High school. <laughs> That's nothing to kid about, Murray. There's one thing we should have respect for in this country. It's the law. It's the foundation of everything we do. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, can I help you? Uh, does anybody know where I can find Ted Baxter? Yeah. I've got a subpoena for him. <laughs> I'll see if I can find him. Hey, that's the best. Uh, you calling Ted as a witness? Uh, no, the prosecution must be calling him to have Ted explain how the newsroom functions. Ted couldn't explain how a men's room functions. <laughs> Hi, Barry. Oh, Lou, can I talk to you a moment? Sure, come on in. So, how's the case going? Oh, I think we got a pretty strong case, Lou, but that's, that's not what I came to talk to you about. Uh, Lou, you, you know I've been spending a lot of time with Mary these past few weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, going over her transcripts, checking the case, mm -hmm. smelling her neck. <laughs> well, aren't you going to say anything? No, oh, why? Everyone smells Mary's neck sooner or later. <laughs> Lou, I, I think you know me well enough to take this seriously when I say that I think I love her. <laughs> I'm not taking this as seriously as I'd hoped. Uh, it's just so predictable, Barry. Guys come in here and guys fall in love with Mary all the time. And sometimes they break her heart, sometimes she breaks their hearts. And in the end, what are they left with? Probably a perfumed note in that precise handwriting. Dear Tom, Dick or Harry, you're a wonderful person, and you've been very special to me. But the chemistry just isn't right between us. I hope you'll understand. I shall always treasure our friendship, love, Mary. But I'm not any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Lou, Mary is somebody I might want to marry. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Sit down. So, you want to marry our Mary. <laughs> Mind if I ask you a few questions? What? How's your health? My health is fine. You drink? I probably drink as much as you do. Oh, my God. <laughs> what are your prospects? My prospects? Mm. What are you asking me these questions for? You're not her father, you know. Well, sit down. Yes, sir. <laughs> what are you doing? Some guy wants to slap me with a subpoena. I don't care if he wants to slap you with a flounder. Get out of my office. Ted, they're going to find you sooner or later anyway. Why don't you save the time and energy and accept the subpoena? They're not going to get me, Sawbones. <laughs> Sawbones is a doctor. Oh, what did I mean? Shyster. <laughs> Thanks. They're not going to get me, Shyster. <laughs> Well, Lou, what do you think about marrying me? Well, well I approve. Oh, oh, Lou. I'm going to go over there and tell her how I feel tonight. I just hope that she feels a little bit the same way, because if she doesn't, it'll kill me. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't talk like that. It won't kill you. It would. Maybe it would hurt you. Kill. <laughs> but, you know, Barry... That kind of proves something I've always thought. Love stinks. <laughs> Lou, quick, you better turn on the monitor. <laughs> this is Nigel Reed substituting for the <laughs> who is on religious retreat. <laughs> Washington. <laughs> I got something for you. Let's make it fast. 
What is it? Those letters you need at the trial from people at WJM saying how great you do your job. Oh, thanks. Three? <laughs> See you tomorrow. Mr. Grant, what's your hurry? Oh, you never know. Somebody might drop in and I shouldn't be here. Hey, you never let that worry you before. Well, maybe I better start worrying about it. Mr. Grant, how about a little drink? <laughs> maybe quickly. <laughs> Quick, quick, Mr. a little Grant, faster. this is as fast as I walk. Uh, no time for ice cubes. You have time for a glass? All right, let's not be sarcastic. Of course I want a glass. A drink should be a sociable occasion. Thank you, Mary. See you in court. Mr. Grant, you're not going anywhere till you tell me what this is all about. All right, maybe I should talk to you about it, because if you had a friend and... Can I get some ice? Okay, Mr. Grant. <laughs> if, if you had a friend who was about to cross a minefield, wouldn't you go out in front of him with a stick to make sure there was a safe path? Is this a trick question? <laughs> no. All right, Mr. Grant, I like to think I'm the kind of person who would not let a friend go out into a minefield without first going out with a stick. <laughs> Me too. Um, how do you feel about Barry? I like him. I think he's a very bright lawyer. Oh, Barry got past my number one. <laughs> uh, do you like him a lot? Yeah, I guess so. Number two mine, clear. Uh, do you love him? No. Boom! <laughs> Maybe I better stop being subtle. Barry's crazy about you. Oh, no. Oh, come on, Mary. You're acting like you don't know. The way you've been leading him on, answering the door with your hair in curlers. <laughs> you did everything but wear eight inch heels, lean against the lamppost, and say hi, sailor. <laughs> Mr. Grant, you know I go on trial tomorrow, and I'm sure in some way you think you're being helpful to someone somewhere, but not here and not me. You. You really don't love him, huh? No. I feel terrible. Why? Because I gave him your hand. <laughs> he did what? Yeah. He's going to be coming here any minute to collect. What makes you so sure he's coming here any minute? You're right. Maybe he's not. <laughs> Mr. Grant, please. I don't want to have this kind of conversation tonight before my trial, not with my lawyer. Please do something. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll head him off. You go into your bedroom. I'll take care of it, haven't I always? No. <laughs> Hi, Barry. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Where's Mary? She's tired. She's asleep. Well, what are you doing here? That's a good question. <laughs> what am I doing here? Uh, look, look, Barry, I'm, I'm not comfortable lying to a friend. I did something tonight that's probably pretty stupid. I, I hope everything works out okay. I, I got into a conversation with Mary, and I ended up telling her how you felt about her. And? And she told me how she felt about you. And? And I know you're going to take this great. Come on, Lou, look, I'm not a kid. Just tell me. She doesn't love you. Yeah, I, I've heard that before. <laughs> I'll hear it again. Hey, come on. You didn't want her anyway. She's a real fuss budget. Precise <laughs> about everything. It'd drive you nuts. She, she belongs with the guy who has every hair in place. A guy who gets a manicure once a week. <laughs> oh, Lord, you're perfect for each other. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I was so nervous. I, I never imagined it would, it would hit me this high. You're going to be over this before you know it. You've got to pull yourself together. Remember, you've got a big case tomorrow. I can't pull myself together, Lou. Huh? Comes a time when you just got to let yourself go. Oh, yeah. But worry about picking up the pieces later. Uh, uh, what do you mean? I'm going to tie one on. I don't care about anything anymore. Barry, uh, listen, Barry. Uh, oh, boy. 
You can come out now. Well, how'd it go, Mr. Grant? Boom. Uh-uh. Boom! <laughs> It's almost nine o'clock. Where's Barry? Relax, Mary. It's it's an old defense lawyer's trick. Come into the courtroom at the last minute. Shows the prosecution how confident he is. drinking coffee ever since the bars closed. <laughs> as long as I don't have to spend too much time on my feet, no one will be the wiser. <laughs> you gotta pull yourself together. Mary could get sent to jail for years. I don't care. I'll wait for her. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. This state appellate court is now in session. The Honorable William Benton presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, I'd like to discuss a point of procedure before we begin. May I approach the bench? You may, Counselor. <clears throat> Mr. Monroe, would you like to join us? Kiss me goodbye. I will. It's going to be okay. Don't worry. Mr. Grant, I'm going to try very hard not to lose my head. You promised me a great lawyer, and you got me Barry. <laughs> I remember even saying thank you, but now Clarence Darrow is standing up there blowing kisses at me, and I could go to prison. What can I say? I owe you one. <laughs> the prosecution may call us first witness. The prosecution calls Ted Baxter. Yo. <laughs> Please repeat after uh, that me. won't be necessary. I know it by heart. I, Ted Baxter, do solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and let the truth so help me God. I was up all night going over it. <laughs> it's very commendable. You may be seated. I guess the applause isn't allowed. <laughs> Mr. Baxter, you are employed at WJM TV. What is the nature of your job? I am the best anchor man in the United States. <laughs> and in your opinion, would you say that Miss Richards' qualifications were comparable to those of a newsman like yourself? I would. In every way, she's every bit qualified as any newsman I've ever known in my life. <laughs> Mr. Baxter, do you know the penalty for perjury? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe not the best anchor man in the whole United States. I mean specifically, what news functions does Miss Richards perform? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they just get together and get the news and give it to me yeah, and I get up there and Mr. Bax, what exactly does Miss Richards do as a producer? I don't know. <laughs> this way? Is it part of her function to go out and seek out new stories? I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Jenkins, would you please tell the court uh, the purpose of this line of question? Certainly, Your Honor. I intend to prove that Mary Richards is not a bona fide newsman and therefore not entitled to First Amendment protection. Well, Mr. Jenkins, if that's your line of argument, perhaps you'd like to request that I disqualify myself from this case. In the last five years, I've seen Miss Richards and her camera crew in the halls of this courthouse many times. In fact, she once supervised an interview with me. In my mind, there's no question but that she's a newsman. And indeed, one of the most competent and uh, charming newsmen I've ever met. Have you been seeing him behind my back? <laughs> However, Mr. Jenkins, I should also tell you that in the event that this trial does proceed with a new judge, I shall feel compelled to offer myself as a witness in Miss Richards' behalf. 
Well, in view of the information Your Honor has just brought before the court, the prosecution acting in what it believes to be the best interest of all parties concerned moves for dismissal. Motion granted, case dismissed. All right. See, I told you Barry would get you off. Defense called his first witness. Uh, it's okay, Barry. Barry, we won. Well, what was the score? <laughs> for the trial, even better. Barry, this, I'm, I'm sorry for everything. Can you forgive me? Probably not. <laughs> and, and if you ever want a, a lawyer, if, if you ever rob a bank or, or kill somebody, I'd be proud to represent you. The Congratulations. You did it again. You're the smartest lawyer I know. I didn't open my mouth. That's smart. <laughs> uh, Mr. Monroe. Uh, yes. Uh, the lady told me to give you this. Uh-huh. Here it comes, a perfumed letter, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're a wonderful guy, but the chemistry isn't right. She'll always treasure your friendship, correct? Dear Barry, I didn't want to tell you this till the trial was over, but I find you terribly attractive, and I must have you before nightfall, or else I'll explode. <laughs> Sue Ann Niven. <laughs> One fireman on the scene to remark, who needs 17 rooms anyway? <laughs> Today's a happy day at WJM. The producer of the 6 o'clock news, Mary Richards, was acquitted of contempt charges by the state appellate court. It was the impassioned testimony of yours truly that convinced the court that Miss Richards was entitled under the First Amendment to not divulge your sources of information. <laughs> Glad to be of help, Mary. <laughs> well, that's the news for this evening, but before I say good night, I'd like to thank Nigel Reed for filling in for me <laughs> while I was on religious retreat. <laughs> God bless you, Nigel. I can't believe it. Ted's taking credit for my acquittal. I could just beat his brains in. Oh, forget it, Mary. By the time you found them, you'd be an old lady. <laughs> hey, pretty good show, huh? On a scale of one to ten, I'd say that was a B plus. Ted, <laughs> how dare you take credit for my acquittal? Hey, listen, Mary, I was the only witness. The judge heard what I had to say through the case out. Mary, let's face it, I saved your bacon. Ted, <laughs> you almost got me sent to prison. When they asked you what I did, you told them you didn't even know what I do around here. Of course I here. told them I didn't know. You don't want to tell them what you really do around here, <laughs> do you? What do you think I do around here? <laughs> well, you come in, you hang up your coat, you talk to Mary, and you go in there, discuss your problems with Lou, and you wear a lot of different clothes, and you have a lot of big parties. You wouldn't want me to tell them that, would you? You really don't know what I do around here, do you? Well, let me tell you what I do, Ted. I send out the film crew, I make the news assignments, I work out the rundown for the show, I hire people, I fire people. I am responsible for everyone else's activities, and I am responsible for every facet of this production. Gee. And I always thought it was my fault the show stunk. <laughs>